Hi there, and uh, thank you for clicking on the link and welcome to EH463, the long run analysis of firms and industries. Um, in this short video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to do in the course. Um, so hope you can make yourself comfortable, perhaps get a cup of tea, close a window, close a door, and uh, for the next few minutes, I'll try to convey to you in very brief terms that you know what the course is about. Um, so um, I think the topic is of course the economic history of firms and industries. And this is a course which is aimed at students within the economic history department doing a master's degree. That's what the, the course prelim preliminary aimed at. Um, so if you look at, at the world today, I think one thing that you notice is that capital is very mobile. It easily moves across borders. It easily moves to different countries. Um, likewise, labor is quite mobile. Between countries, it's sometimes a bit difficult. Within countries, it seems to be quite mobile. Um, also, things like management expertise seems to be very mobile. Things like scientific expertise. So in the world today, you can buy lots of inputs in the markets. There are lots of things available. So there are some very puzzling things. Let's look, for example, at a company like Apple. I'm recording this video on an Apple computer. I actually have an Apple phone. I'm wearing a watch made by Apple. And Apple seems to be a very profitable company. It has a very large market share. It makes lots of profits. And the kind of mystery is, you know, given that Apple is so profitable, how can it keep existing in this form? Because in theory, it should be very easy to buy the management expertise, buy the technological expertise, get the finance, um, get the workers, and, and just build your organization, copy what Apple is doing, and capturing part of the profits that Apple is making. Yet in practice, we see that firms often for quite some time are able to keep a, a large market share. And many firms for, for quite a long times are able to keep these market shares. Sometimes we see three changing it, but that happens far less than we would think if we think how mobile all the factors of production are. Um, so I think this is one of the topics of the course. You know, why do these firms exist? How can we explain that? What factors are important? And in the course, to answer this question, we're going to make use of history. We're going to say, well, only by looking at a very long run, looking at the history, we might get more, more some insight into this question. And we, we might, might be able to talk more precisely about the question and perhaps even think about ways how we could address this question. Um, so this is basically what the course is about. And as I said, it's, it's aimed at economic history students. Um, quite, quite some part of the course will be, for example, writing of historical essays. The um, exam assessment will involve writing historical essays, mini essays, usually exam answers, a certain number of words. Um, so I think it's important to notice that we use history to investigate this, this question. Now, the key thing you probably wonder when you're watching this, you know, is this course for me? Um, should I attend this course or not? And I'm going to present you with three tests which will assist you in finding out whether this course is for you. And I'll start with test one. So in test one, I would like to invite you to write an essay of about a thousand words, so about two or three pages, about the problem I just mentioned, the mystery I just mentioned. So why do these big firms exist? Why do they manage to, to make you know, such enormous profits? And why don't competitors succeed in, in you know, reducing those profits in a timely fashion? Um, and in this essay, you know, try to address this question, try to analyze it, but also try to think, you know, what evidence could throw more light on this question? What historical evidence, for example, you might perhaps Google a bit or looking in any history books, you might have to look at some historical evidence as well and how that can help us find explanations for this. Yeah. Now, just in case, you know, you, 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 you actually fancy a different topic, I have a, I have a second topic 
on which you can write an essay instead. And that's the kind of the more general question. Why do firms exist? Why do firms exist? Or why, why isn't everything happening through the markets? So again, try to write a thousand words on that. And also try to think a little bit about the role of history in this. Try to think if you can find some historical evidence, which might be useful. But just write a thousand words on it and just see how you're going. And if in this writing exercise you realize you really enjoy it, you enjoy the writing, perhaps you also enjoy the historical detective work and you get inspired, then that might be a good indication that a course might be for you. If you find a contrary, then maybe you might want to look at some of the other courses and see if there's a course you fancy. Okay, so that was the first test. Now we get to the second test. And the second test is basically that you, um, I, I suggest you uh, go to the library website, you search for the library reading lists page, and then in the library reading list search screen, you type in EH463. After you've done that, you will see the reading list for this course organized by session, divided in essential readings and other readings. And most readings are available electronically. So you can click on a reading and you see the reading itself. So what I'd suggest is to browse through this reading list and to click on some readings that you find interesting and to, um, uh, to just, you know, Perhaps even read a few of those videos, start reading them and just think, do I like them? Uh, you know, do I like the things they discuss? Um, and you can, of course, read them from A to Z. But what you also can do is to read the abstract of a reading, read the conclusion, read the introduction, read the conclusion again. Think, you know, how does this make me wiser about the reading? Do you want to read it further? And then decide which other parts of the readings you want to read. You might read a couple of readings just to get a bit of an idea of what's the course about. And the beauty of this test is that exactly this kind of activity is a lot of what you will do uh, throughout the course. So it will immediately test you a bit hands on. You know, do I feel okay when I do when I'm doing this? Do I get excited? You might even, you know, if you have some more time, just you know, select a few readings you really like, and then say, okay, I'm, I'm taking half an hour to read this reading. I'm just reading half an hour, whatever I can read from this reading. It's going to take 15 minutes to write down my thoughts, to type up my thoughts of this reading. And just see how you go with that. Okay. So that's test two. So if by the end of test two, um, you get really excited about this and you fire in your belly, then maybe this course is, is, is for you. And remember, it's an optional course. So it's really important that you, you feel a connection with the course because it's your opportunity to choose a course. And I think if you choose a course you like, if you like this course, you have an affinity with it it's much easier to do well in the course. And in a way, it might even be a breach because you're doing something you like. Yeah? So some time invested now might have a very big payoff in, in getting the right course for you. Because also if you find that this is not the right course, then it's also a very good and very valid finding. Um, so now that we're the first two tests, I'll get to the third test a little bit later. Um, but let, let's now go a bit to the organization of the course. Now, this course is seminar based. That means that there are no lectures and that you as students run the course. So what we have are uh, class discussions. We have uh, group debates. We have student presentations. Sometimes we do some detective work with the whole class. Usually before a class, we, we each might write a brief mini essay of one page in one of the readings. Uh, some people might prepare a presentation, sometimes other exercises. So it's an extremely interactive course based on all our participation, based on discussion, conversation, debate, um, and also things like presentations and, and writing. Um, and each session will basically discuss three to four readings on a specific topic. And we also discuss, of course, the historical context around them. Um, so that's basically how the course is organized. So also important that you, you, you feel comfortable with this way of working. So it's very interactive. We'll do a lot of kind of things during the, the term. I think it also means by the end of the term, we'll have a very good grasp of the topic because not only have you, you know a lot about it, but you also have learned how to apply it in various different ways. So I think if you like the course, it will work very well. Um, 
in Squamish primarily for economic history students. If you're from outside the department, remember it's a history course. So the exam will be uh, usually two exam questions which involve writing historical essays or two historical essays about a topic. The coursework will also be writing historical essays. The weekly work often involves writing mini essays, etc. So it's really a course that is historical and that is focused on writing essays a lot. That's the main means of how we test our knowledge and what we do. Um, of course, there, they include analy analysis of, of studies that might include lots of different methods. So we will discuss those in those essays. But this is the way of, of, of um, testing in, in a way. So, so make sure you're familiar with that. Good to make sure you've done essay-based exams before in which you write you know, uh, historical essays. And feel free to talk to me if you have any questions about that to establish you know, whether this is for you. You might even check some of the last exams and just see you know, if I would such, such, such an exam, how would I feel about it? Have I said, said similar exams before? Um, okay, so I think I discussed most things. Um, yeah, what I also would like to say is it's very difficult for me to foresee what kind of questions each of you may have. So if I didn't address your question in the last five minutes or so, then please uh, do send me an email or make an appointment for my office hours. Uh, perhaps you can meet on Zoom, but, but do get in touch and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have about the course. Um, okay, now, um, those of you who've listened quite well may realize I still haven't talked about the third test, but I think this is the moment where we've reached the third and final test, whether or not this course is for you. I think if you're still listening at this moment, um, then you've taken a very good hurdle in a way that if you're still listening at this moment and you haven't fast forwarded this video, then it might be an indication that this course might be for you. Make sure that you do the other two tests in that case. Make sure you write the essay, you check the readings, you read some papers in detail. But I mean, if you made it until here, then I would certainly encourage you to do the other two tests to either confirm or uh, falsify, uh, I would say corroborate or falsify, I should say officially, whether or not uh, this course is for you. Okay, thank you very much for listening. And I hope to see some of you in the seminar uh, this year. Okay, bye-bye.